There has been an attack of sets of 15 U.S. warships uh, with chemical weapons uh, being used on these 15 ships. I'm going to detail the different ships involved and uh, some of the chemicals uh, that were used. This is the USS Herbert J. Thomas. Had, uh, has uh, supposedly 261 personnel on board at the time of the attack. The USS Tonga County. The USS Carpenter with several hundred uh, Navy and Deseret personnel on board at the time of the attack. USS Howell with uh, Marine and Navy personnel and Deseret personnel, hundreds of them on board at the time of the attack. USS Greenville S. Hall with Marine and Navy personnel on board at the time of the attack. The USS Power with Navy and Deseret personnel on board, 296 on board at the time of the chemical weapons attack. USS George Eastman with Navy and Deseret personnel, 120 personnel on time on board at the time of the chemical attack. It is believed that these ships were all attacked uh, with chemical weapons um, and uh, it were, they were attacked by um, the U.S. military. Well, actually, that is the truth, guys. Uh, all of these ships um, were attacked in the mid-1960s uh, with chemical weapons. The personnel on board were not notified that, that they were going to be attacked with the chemical weapons. Um, and I've got actual footage of that. I'm going to show you here in a few minutes of uh, the uh, attacks. The way they did it was they either placed the uh, chemicals in a plane and they flew over and sprayed it in front of the a uh, ship as it was sailing and uh, the chemicals just came down onto the ship of course and and everybody on board was affected uh, it was so called uh, Project Shad okay mid 1960s now over in Syria somebody or in any, any other country someone uses chemical weapons on people that are unknowing and unwilling you bomb that country well in this case, the U.S. government used, and the U.S. military used chemical weapons on Navy, Marine, and many other um, uh, affiliated uh, type military people uh, on a regular basis. They were, they were in excess of, and I've got the paperwork here in front of me from actually a, uh, we'll call that person a VA insider that gave me the paperwork. It lists out all the chemicals that were used particularly uh, one of interest you might ring a bell to you of something going on in Syria uh, called sarin nerve gas nerve agent okay um, and there's a VX nerve agent and uh, the list goes on and on as to the, the type of gas that was used on these unwilling participants and uh, they did it uh, numerous numerous times some of the ships were attacked uh, more than once and uh, and uh, the uh, personnel on board were affected. Now I'm going to give you a little bit more information here on this. Okay, it's this is a, a report on uh, Project Shad. Okay, um, but before I read this, I want to read to you the numbers of soldiers. Well, let me just tell you this: they were in excess of five thousand. Okay. They gassed 5,000, in excess of 5,000 soldiers. Um, unexpected, unknowing, and they gassed them with every chemical agent you can think of. The list is, I can't even read uh, half of these. Um, the list is, uh, um, well, it's chemical and biological agents, actually. Uh, and the list is very long here. And uh, unbelievable. They even gassed tugboats, military uh, related tugboats. They gassed uh, everything you could think of. I mean, every kind of ship that you could imagine is on this list. Um, anyways, I was going to give you some more information. Project Shad sh uh, ship Shipboard Hazard and Defense was a series of tests. Tests, that's a pretty word for gassing the hell out of 5,000 people. Tests conducted by the Department of Defense, the DOD, in the 1960s and early 70s in, to investigate the effectiveness of shipboard detection of, the, uh, of and protection procedures against chemical and biological warfare agents. 
Within each test, there were typically several separate trials involved, involving exposure of vessels with various agents. So they would attack the ships numerous times, unknowingly to the ships, just out of the blue, uh, with various agents, just like I've got the list here to tell you. In some cases, all the trials within a particular test used the same agent, but for some tests, different agents were used in different trials. Agents include chemical warfare, agents, sarin, and VX, and biological warfare agents, and I can't even read those names. Uh, and chemical warfare stimulants such as zinc, cadmium, sulfide, and biological warfare stimulants such as bacacus, whatever, and uh, the, you can see the words there. Um, although the tests were originally classified, of course, you can't go around telling people, telling the United States or the American people or the world people that you're gassing the hell out of your own damn soldiers. Um, <laughs> says all the tests were originally classified. Public and media interest has led to the Department of Defense to investigate these tests. Led to the Department of Defense, the ones that did it, to investigate these tests and to declassify and make publicly available relevant information from them. Project SHAD involved mainly service members from the Navy, Marines, numbering more than 5,000. The tests were conducted in several areas of the Southwest Pacific, many around Hawaii and in the Atlantic. The general, the general procedure for testing ship vulnerabilities to biological and chemical agents and stimulants varied slightly from the tests and trials. The most common method of disseminating the materials, meaning uh, using chemical weapons on them, uh, um, on the ships was by aircraft. Typically the aircraft, aircraft craft would fly in front of the target ship and release the chemical weapons from spray tanks mounted on the wings. You know how they kind of do the chemtrails now. After the material was released, the ship would then steer through the, you know, just straight ahead through the cloud and uh, record and record information. <laughs> Nobody on board had any had any clue that this was going to happen. The second most popular method with dispersing the agents or stimulants was to release the material from a turbine disseminator located on the bow of the target ship. Further material describing the nature and conduct of the test may be found and that website doesn't exist anymore okay um, just wanted to sh bring this to y'all guys because I find it complete hypocrisy that we can go around saying that someone used t uh, chemical weapons and we're gonna go bomb that country but yet in fact we use the same damn things the same sarin gas that they're talking about in Syria you know and even though the UN um, Human Rights Council has come out and said that it was fake, I'm sitting here and I can see that the, the mainstream Zionist-owned media is continuing to push ahead with information of, um, the, you know, that the, this is real, that this stuff is real. And it's been proven over and over on the, uh, on the Internet, on alternate media throughout the Internet. And even said by the UN Human Rights Council fake 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 okay and the ones that did get released the sarin that did get released was the rebels which are the Al-Qaeda which is a CIA operative group which is backed of course by the United States government if you're not aware of these things you're not paying attention okay you've been asleep too long it's time to wake up you can't bomb other countries when you're the person doing the spraying of the chemical weapons. Of course, this is our modus apparatus, right? This is the way we normally operate. This is the way the U.S. government normally operates, is, is by creating the problem and then offering the solution, right? That's how they've done it for, for 100 years, 200 years. This is the way that they operate. They're criminals. And once again, making the point, we gassed our own soldiers, over 5,000 of them. I've got the VA paperwork right here that shows me from my VA insider that many of these soldiers, many of these Marines and, and, and Navy personnel have many, many health-related diseases that are related to this and are disabled uh, from being exposed to these chemicals. 
Unbelievable, right guys? Well, I hope I made my point here. Hope this point is uh, timely. And I hope you'll share this video and, and uh, help me spread the hypocrisy of what the United States corporate incorporated in 1871 government so-called government for the people by the people yeah right talk to you again soon here on logic before authority in 1961 the Kennedy administration led by Secretary McNamara undertook a broad review of defense programs numbering more than 150 different management initiatives during this period there were serious and legitimate concerns about the soviet union's chemical and biological warfare program the tests were not conducted to evaluate the effects of dangerous agents on people as such they were not medical tests but were operational tests of war fighting capability in some cases there was a spraying of agent in the air in other cases at more near range Half of the tests were uh, maybe a little less than half used live agents and roughly half used simulants. These operational tests were conducted over land as well as at sea and included locations in the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. Our best estimate today is that roughly 5,000 service members were involved in the sea-based tests and roughly 500 in the land based test. We do know that some civilians were exposed in tests that occurred in Hawaii, possibly in Alaska, and possibly in Florida. Because it was operational in nature and not a medical human subjects type of research, I would presume that it was not voluntary that people were part of units that were doing this kind of work and were expected to, to do that kind of work. The department has worked diligently to release the medical relevant facts about this testing and to ensure that the VA has the information it needs to respond to questions and benefit claims from veterans. We're on track to meet our stated promise of having all relevant information released by spring of 03. I'm optimistic that barring any unforeseen problems, will have concluded the effort far in advance of that time.